Hey everyone, Anthony here, and today I'm pairing my favorite Japanese whiskey with one of my all-time favorite cigars. So let's get into it. The thing I love about Japanese whiskey, to me it drinks like a scotch, but it also drinks like a bourbon at the same time. And what I mean by that is, you know, scotch has a lot of diversity depending on the age of the scotch, the barrels that it's aged in, right? But bourbon also has this kind of like bold aggressiveness to it. To me, Japanese whiskey is the best of both worlds when it comes to that because there's big bold flavors in it, but yet, very approachable notes to it too. So, you know, you know, the Japanese do a phenomenal job of bringing you a full flavored whiskey, like what I consider bourbon to be really rich and full, right? But also have delicate notes, like a scotch can when you taste citrus and floral notes. So I like the fusion of the two. To me, I think the Japanese just went to work on a whiskey that would have the best qualities of whiskeys they tried from all over the world, you know, from Scotland, Scotch, of course, right? From the US with bourbon, some of the best. And they basically wanted to kind of replicate that in one package. And I think Japanese whiskey delivers like that. And I love that it combines those because it's really hard to do. You know, we talk about even doing that with cigars. You know, you want a cigar that's blended so well that has nuanced flavors, but it's bold and it's rich. And that's not easy to do. You know, I've talked about it in videos in the past. To obtain that level of flavor and complexity in a cigar is no easy task, right? So, you know, you're talking about one of the best cigar makers in the world with this Ashton ESG, obviously the Fuente family. A lot of work went into this Dominican Puro. You know, wrapper, filler, binder, all from the Dominican. You know, Carlito Fuente and his father, Don Carlos at the time, came up with this blend for the Levin family and Ashton Cigars with one thing in mind, making one of the finest cigars in the world. And they definitely hit their mark. But I draw comparisons to this Ashton ESG, to this Yamazaki 18, because there's a ton of age on this tobacco. There's a lot of age on this whiskey, right? So they're both approachable to start with the Yamazaki 18. Like when you sniff it, the nose has floral notes, honeysuckle, lavender, citrus, right? And then when you sip it, it's totally different. It has really nice flavors of kind of like a jamminess to it, like blackberry, tobacco, even dark chocolate. And again, there, the, and the notes on it, the citrus notes and that honeysuckle that I'm talking about on the nose, they kind of go to the background and on the finish. So when it finishes, it finishes smooth and approachable again. So it's like upfront fruit, right? And then on the back, fruit. But in the middle, you're getting notes of vanilla, you're getting notes of tobacco, dark chocolate, right? And with the cigar, the ESG, as you smoke it, it opens up very approachable, medium bodied, notes of kind of creaminess and nuttiness to it. It has a, like a sweet a cedar note to it, like sweet cedar note to it. But as you smoke it, you notice this black pepper creeping up on you, right? Which I love the way it develops. I grab the Churchill size of the ESG because I want to give this cigar full time to develop, but any of the sizes would be extremely well paired with this Yamazaki 18. So yeah, I, I think this is a perfect pairing. You know, I've said it before in previous videos, my Desert Island cigar would be the Ashton ESG. And when I think of an accompaniment to that Ashton ESG, if I had to bring a whiskey with me on that Desert Island, it would be the Yamazaki 18. To me, it makes perfect sense. They're meant for each other. And believe me when I tell you, it's an outstanding pairing. So I wanna thank you for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed the pairing. Until next time, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you here next time.